Men når man er parti til bedding, så bedder det sang de Amen. The day we have the feast of Saint um, Januarius, a martyr in the Diocletian persecution in the year 305, and uh, there's a continued um, miracle associated with him um, in the uh, uh, town, city of Naples, Italy. But we'll, we'll get to that. Uh, but he was born to a wealthy patrician family, and um, probably um, due to that, uh, his status, but also his ability, it says that he became a priest of his local parish at the age of 15. So probably not the pastor, but maybe an, an assistant, you know, I don't know if he heard confessions. I don't know what kind of advice he might have given. But um, uh, th at that time, there was the area was largely pagan, so it could have been there was a shortage of priests uh, or so on. Uh, but anyways, the community was small, and when uh, Jan Warius was 20, he became Bishop of Naples. Uh, during the persecution of Diocletian, uh, he and his fellow Catholics did their best uh, to carry things on in secret, uh, but some were caught and imprisoned, and he himself was also caught while attempting to minister uh, to those who had been captured. Uh, he and uh, his, his fellow faithful were condemned to be thrown to wild beasts in the amphitheater. However, uh, the animals would not touch them, so uh, St. Januarius and the others imprisoned with him uh, were then beheaded. Uh, so thus, the, uh, um, not too many details of his life, uh, but the, um, the phenomena of today's saint is that a miracle continues even down to this day, uh, you know, the, about 1,700 years later. Um, some, of the, some of his blood was collected at the time of his martyrdom, and it was kept. And uh, the, nowadays, the blood is stored in a vial, about a half full vial of, of his blood. And every, every year on this day, the Feast of St. Jan Marius, it uh, liquefies. It's, it's solid, but then uh, on this day, that you can turn it, and it, it's obviously a liquid. So uh, there's, there's some, there's some, rec some uh, the, way, the way it works in, in um, Naples is this blood, they're kept in some vials, uh, or one vial, and it's kept in a vault uh, uh, for safekeeping, and the relics are kept in, I think it's the, um, uh, the Cathedral of Naples. And every year, uh, and sometimes on special feast days, uh, but every year on, on this feast, uh, both the relics and the blood are taken to the uh, Monastery of St. Clair. And then the Archbishop holds the reliquary and he tilts it and it, it shows people that um, it, you know, he, it's solid. And then they bring the relic and the blood next to the alt, um, um, on the altar and then it liquefies and the bishop holds it up again and people can see that, that it is, has turned into liquid. So um, every day, the, er, every year on this feast, that is, is held to be um, a recurring miracle. Now it does occur sometimes that um, they'll leave it out for about two weeks and uh, sometimes the blood liquefies right away. Sometimes it doesn't liquefy uh, except for a few days. Um, and sometimes in the vault, they'll find it is already liquefied. So um, the, the, the phenomena though, it's, it's scientists cannot explain this. Um, they, there, is, you know, they, there is a way of taking dried blood and you can, you can through, I think a centrifuge, you can liquefy it, but it can't go back and forth. That's what scientists can't figure out. Like how is it going from dried to liquid to dried to liquid? It's inexplicable. So, you know, miracles are still happening. Uh, and, and this is the kind of thing when people say like, well, if God exists, why isn't there proof? We have thousands of things just like this. We, and it's in the Catholic Church and science cannot explain it. Uh, the incorruptibles, for example, right? Uh, Sister Wilhelmina there in, in, in Gower, even in this country. Uh, the blood here that's been, been liquefying for, you know, over a thousand years. And so many other miracles, the miracle of the sun in Fatima, uh, the Eucharistic miracles, uh, you know, recent one, I think in 1980 something in uh, uh, South America, over and over and over again. Uh, the Tilma of Our Lady of Guadalupe, there we go, there's another one. I mean, uh, the, the, the house, the Holy House at Loreto, it's just coming to me. All these things. Now, I tell you what, what, what the Catholic Church, what the bishop should do, um, there, there should be a worldwide um, presentation of these miracles. Uh, it says like, this is part, part of, only part of the proof of the Catholic Church. What other religion has this collection of proof? There has to be a faith. There has to be a living faith uh, uh, that inspired by the Holy Ghost. You can have plenty of people in the church with a dead faith, and that's what we're seeing these days. They don't believe in living faith. They don't have the Holy Ghost within them because they don't want to hear the truth. If they wanted the truth, they, they would be continuing it from the past. There's a continued line of truth throughout the ages of the church because that truth is coming from the Holy Ghost. 
And a sign of the Holy Ghost is that those truths are always the same. That's how you know if the Holy Ghost is inspiring somebody. Is he saying, is he preaching a gospel that St. Paul preached? But if anybody comes to you with a different gospel, let them be accursed. And that's why, uh, and, and the reason why, why that, that would be, why does uh, uh, St. Januarius' blood liquefy to show us that the saints are still alive? They're not dead. Uh, they're still alive, that there's still a living blood, they're in heaven, and, and they're with us, and the church is living. And, and we, you know, it says, although in the eyes of the world, you know, uh, the, the saints may seem to die, the church may seem to die, but it always will live, and it's through the proof of these miracles and so many others like it. And, and we, need to be, we need to know that, we need to be able to say that. When people ask if God exists, why isn't there proof? There's so much proof, logical proof, historical proof, pr uh, current proof, uh, um, um, personal proof. I mean, everybody has had those experiences that you can't explain. Uh, it is so much proof. Uh, so be absolutely convinced, uh, especially in these times when, when things seem so dark, uh, don't be, um, you know, don't let yourselves become faint-hearted. Uh, uh, it, it's, 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 it's saints like this, Saint Januarius. His blood still liquefies to this day. He's still alive. He's in heaven. He's waiting for us, and so are the rest of the saints. And, 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 and uh, um, you know, they're praying for us. They want us to be uh, um, firm in this time. So that would say, if there's, if there's one virtue, like every age in the church kind of has its virtue. Uh, in the early days of the church, with the, like the Desert Fathers, the virtue was um, uh, probably uh, um, fortitude you know, fasting and incredible penances and all-night vigils and, and living on a pillar in the middle of the, the elements. I mean, incredible physical host, uh, um, austerities in, in the early age of the church, right? In other ages of the church, it's been uh, just an overflowing love and incredible self-sacrifice. In this age, I would have to say, any saint who makes it, is, is, is the, 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 the um, virtue is going to be faith, faith and hope, because there's not a whole lot of that right now. There's not a whole lot of people that believe, and there's not much hope, that, not that we can see in this world. So I would say cling fast to that, right? Cling fast to our faith and hope and, and be willing, like the martyrs, right? Um, you know, they, they went to their death, uh, killed by the sword, killed by fire, killed by wild beasts. Uh, things were dark, you know, the whole church was being persecuted. Uh, they kept the faith. So I would say that needs to be our, our firmness in our prayer. Uh, may we keep the faith, and may that be a beacon to others. Uh, so may God bless you all in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.